All right. Cool. All right. So we are here with my buddy, Duke. Um, him and I used to work together in central PA a little bit. So he's been a good friend of mine for a while. So I wanted to get him on here just to do like a little like interview of how he's like life med device when he first started, all that other kind of stuff as well. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you do. Sure. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having me on, dude. Um, started about five years ago in med device. It's actually an internship when I first started um, a company called Zimmer Biomed Spine. I uh, worked for a distributor at the time. Um, what the setup was just meaning learning, learning how health systems work, you know, setting up for cases with um, some of the reps I worked with out in central Pennsylvania. And then they had me in Philadelphia sometimes. Uh, once I got through the internship um, and graduated college, the guy I was working for at the time offered me a full-time uh, position out here as a sales rep. So I took it right away. Um, still, still distributing the same products from the same company since then. Um, it's all spine. You know, we have a pretty much whole portfolio of cervical, lumbar, and thoracic, as well as motion pre preservation. Uh, this is called Moby C, which is our niche product. Um, but back to what Matt was asking, um, this job is is really cool because you get to work with really, really um, smart people that are helping people change their lives, making their lives better. Um, neuro and ortho spine doctors, they're just really good guys. Um, for me, I love this job because I would not do well behind a desk all, all day. So, so actually, yeah. that actually gets me to my next question. So, like, what led you to med device in general? Like, were you searching sure. for certain things like that and this came up, or was it, you know, a whole different story? Sure. I mean, the, my, uh, I always knew I wanted to be in sales or some type of business format after I graduated college. Um, I was, a, I had a, uh, I got a marketing degree from Shippensburg uh, University. Um, Med device kind of fell in my lap, dude. I, I knew somebody that was in the business. Um, and like I said, they offered me an internship and I knew like I had an internship with a chiropractic office before I started the uh, internship with uh, the distributor. And it just, I knew um, just a different, like being behind a desk all day. And just, um, I knew, I knew I'd like, I like to hunt and, um, bring sales in. Like, I just always knew that, you know? So, and just like med device, um, it's an interesting field and, you know, you're out and about every day trying to help people, but you're also, you know, you're really, um, making an impact on hospitals and doctors and patients. So, so what, uh, what do you think is the hardest thing about it? Like, if you had to like quantify like one thing, like, what do you think about all the time was like being specifically hard for you? Just learning the job, man. And just like getting the experience. So you know how to sell to these doctors. Like, you know, you can't just go in, um, your first day and try to sell to a doctor. It doesn't work like that. You really got to build up your knowledge on surgery, how health systems work. Um, you know, the value of your product, um, yeah, a lot goes into it. And that, that that's definitely scary and that's tough. But I think I've come to learn, like, if you get if you get through that hump of, you know, learning that, that, that there's a huge learning curve for sure. But if you get over that hump and, you know, you get that experience, you could be really successful in this uh, job. So would you say where you worked gave you that opportunity to sort of be new in a sense? Like, like, you know, for example, what I mean by that really is, did you feel overwhelmed in the beginning? Like, oh yeah, you in the cases like all that kind of stuff, or was it you know, you had a mentor that you could like always go in with? For sure, it was both actually. Um, you know, they they knew I was I, I was willing to take on any type of challenge or just being thrown into what whatever. But um, the rep um, they partnered me with when I first started. His name is Devin, and he's been just such a great mentor to me. Um, he's taught me everything I know. Um, he's actually let me be a part of his territory um, ever since I you know got this full time this job. Um, just having him, uh, having him have my back has been really helpful. Um, but you know, getting, you have to be thrown in the fire in this job. You know, you can't just like kind of be coddled into it. It doesn't work like that. I think if you are thrown in, you kind of get the experience and maybe make a mistake or two. You, that's how you learn and how you get really good at this job. If that makes sense, Matt. Mm -hmm. No, no, big time. Um, would you think there's some mistakes that are, you know, 100% going to happen with this job versus ones that, you know, more situations that like you shouldn't be put in to make that mistake? A hundred percent. I think it's like, I think it's both. Um, in business, you know, you're, you're always problem solving, you know what I mean? And that's what you try to do for these doctors when, you know, they, they might be using your product, you know, they're trying to save time in the OR, it has a reason, um, 
that they want to use it for their patients. Um, yeah, I mean, it just, it, it's a very, it's an interesting field, man. It's, 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 um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I had a funny story. I mean, you obviously know the story already, but like when I first started and when I, it was actually probably, I think my second day employed as like a spine rep, um, we had like an add on case and I was told to go downstairs and like grab the trays from like SPD. And I had mm -hmm. actually seen somebody else like put one of the trays that was in the casing on the floor mm -hmm. when they actually had to like put it onto a cart or something. Cause it was a, like two trays on the bottom floor. So I figured I was just going to like put one on the ground and the other one like on the cart at the next time. And I figured I was like, well, they're in the casing. So I'm like, you know, nothing is going to really make that unsterile, which was just my thought process at the time. Right. So I had seen it done and I didn't know any better. And then, uh, yeah. yeah, a woman comes around and she's like, you didn't need those like right away, did you? And I was like, yeah, we actually did. We had to take them to like OR, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, she's like, well, you can't use them anymore. And at this point, I was petrified because I didn't know anything about hospitals at that point because I was like, I thought, you know, this was the only, I knew that was the only one that we had. And uh, I thought I literally like botched that whole entire surgery for like that patient or at least like delayed it because they were going to need to sterilize it again. And uh, I was actually, <laughs> I was extremely relieved. I'm like, I realized that a competitor could be used at least, or like they had like a backup there that I was able to use, but yeah, just something that like, I didn't know. And yeah, that was probably actually the scariest moment of my whole entire time doing that. Oh, like, it was just, just, it, just like for me. I'm um, sure, man. And then also going back to like, you know, you can't even control the other mistakes people are making. You know what I mean? Like, for example, a couple of weeks ago, my trays were mislabeled and I accidentally um, I had a tray for instruments and implants and SPD accidentally marked the instrument tray as my other implant tray, which I needed for another case to follow. And when we got into the room, both the implant trays were open and, you know, like navigating and working around someone else's mistakes, but also learning from, you know, you got to have backups. You got to, you know, just be ready for the unknown or the unexpected. You know what I mean? That's, that's what a lot of this job has taught me as well. Oh yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, I found that out pretty like early on too. Um, okay, so the next question is like, what would you say is like the biggest struggles with growing business? Is it more like a time constraint because like you and Devin would be constrained for time or is it actually getting the surgeons to use your your things? I think it's more getting it approved in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's definitely the toughest, you know what I mean? Like health systems, um, you know, can be very tough on, you know, bringing in a new product in, and especially if you're a vendor that's not really in the health system in general, that could become very tough. But going back to what you were just asking, the time constraint thing, uh, Devin and I have such a large territory. So, you know, me and him may be in two ends of the state uh, for small cases that, you know, may, may take two hours, but could end up taking four to five hours, you know, but that's when we're losing our time to go settle other doctors. But we have been, um, we actually did, uh, our agent principal with our distributor right now was able to get uh, a new associate running with us out here. So it's been very helpful to have someone, you know, manage the inventory a little bit more or help us with that. And then set up cases while me and Devin can spend extra time with doctors, you know, selling or just, you know, creating that relationship. So, you know, those guys can help get your products in. If that makes sense. That's a good point. Now, is there like anything you wish was different? Like one thing, like about the situation that you're in that you think could help you? Ooh. Um, you know, there's a lot of things going on with the main company I distribute for. Um, they were bought by private equity back in the winter. Um, we're now the largest, the largest privately owned spine company in the world. So, you know, right now I, I've been through a lot of changes in the past four to five years, especially when COVID hit. Mm -hmm. There's something I would do right now. Ah, I don't know. I just, uh, I think uh, Devin and I would do pretty well on our own, if that makes sense. I don't think we need to be tied to a bigger distributor. Um, and I think if we were given more investment and, um, you know, tools, I think me and him could even be, uh, even have a higher sales number that we do, uh, now, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So. No, no, no. I 100%. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So if you were to be asked. Like, what was your, you know, what is your best advice to someone that like just got their first job tomorrow mm -hmm. in med device? Uh, be a sponge. Soak everything you can in your first year. 
um, say yes. <laughs> Always have your phone on loud. You oh know? my God. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I mean, listen, you could be a pharmaceutical rep. You could be um, just a biologic rep that kind of goes in hospitals and pain management, but still like you're going to get a call, like the most random call. And it's going to be, you know, it could be a big business, business opportunity to be a doctor that needs it something in some emergency. Like that's my biggest advice for you. The big three things I'd say, have your phone on loud, be a sponge and say, yes, you know, don't say no. You know what I mean? Take, take a lot of the opportunities that you get and just say yes um and just go around and like uh make yourself known um take the next year or so you know and make a name for yourself that's how i felt uh that's how i found my success in this territory is just you know making sure doctors know who i am and uh, what i sell you know what i mean what i bring to the table in general yeah man they call you the duke of spine over there at hershey <laughs> <laughs> actually like I didn't even realize that like the first time I heard that, I didn't even realize they were like talking about you at first. I didn't, I had no idea. They were like, Oh yeah, the Duke of spine will be here soon. And I was like, who's that? And they were like Duke. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> I was like, I've never heard that before in my life. The story behind that is, uh, once, uh, Zimmer separated their spine division, which I'm a part of, uh, and created Zim B, uh, three to four years ago, they 1099 all the reps. So everybody had to create their own LLC. I didn't know, like, uh, like I, I figured like no one was ever going to see my LLC cause I was tied to Zim V, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I'm not selling my own company, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So one of the residents at Hershey connected with me on LinkedIn and I had my LLC listed and one of the doctors found out about it at Hershey as well. So no every way. time I see him, <laughs> like, he loves to bust my, bust my chops a little bit. Um, and he's always like, ah, oh, the Duke is fine. The Duke is fine. So I ended up did changing my LLC. So I was a little embarrassed about that. <laughs> I thought never, no one would ever find out, but uh, no. That's, I mean, actually, that's hilarious. Yeah, but honestly, I think it's kind of a funny name. It's cool. It's whatever. I think it is a funny name, dude. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, I actually never knew that was the story, man. I thought some of the residents probably just would have like called you that or something like that. That's funny. No. Yeah. That's really, <laughs> that's really funny. Um, all right. So what are, uh, what are your goals for the future, man? Are you trying to like, you know, how long do you want to stay a rep? Do you want to like grow your own thing? Do that? Do you want to be like a management role? What's uh, you know what? the Duke plan? The Duke plan right now. Um, I like where I'm at. I love being a rep, dude. Um, I could definitely see myself in a managerial role at some point. Um, I think the main goal is just to keep growing with Devin and um, really grow with our really main doctors, you know, get more out of them, if that makes sense. Because um, no, Devin and I know we bring a lot of value. Um, and we, we also, I think our other goals is just to find a couple bigger products niche products because we have the freedom to do that being distributors and um you know being successful off that and i think just that, that's my ultimate goal, goal right now is just grow business and then uh just see where the road takes me the med, road, med device road takes me dude because the past four to five years it's just been every year it's just been something happens you know what i mean from zimmer biomed spine to zim v to now high ridge medical so i'm kind of just going in with an open mind for the next few years you know what i mean yeah man yeah, we're uh, we're buddies again, man. <laughs> Same company, buddies. Back in High Ridge, man. <laughs> um, okay, so the biggest like and dislike with the industry as a whole. This is actually the last question I got for you. Sure, I'll start with the biggest dislike. Um, I think some health systems, and in general, some people within the health system, I think, do not value reps enough. And I think the conversation about how um, you know reps are not going to be needed in the future, I don't think that should be a thing. You know, we 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 are valuable assets in the OR, especially for younger doctors who are still learning about you know how med devices or their 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 med device that they're using. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and plus, you know, like um, a lot of surgeons end up being kind of friendly with their reps sometimes if you create a, a big relationship. But like also, it's kind of like a calming thing for them in the OR. That makes sense. But I would say my biggest dislike is like, I think we're undervalued in some areas. And I think the health system would take the time and look at what a vendor brings in in general, especially the OR ones. Um, you know, I think, um, I think it would just, I, I think it would just be better for everybody. In general. If, if that makes sense. Um, no, no, that 100% makes sense. Yeah. Going yeah. through that for a little bit. Mm -hmm. and my biggest like is man, um, 
the, the industry is always changing and there's technologies that are just going to be coming out like just they're going to be just getting better and better and better over time so just seeing getting to see that and like knowing that um healthcare is just always going to get better i think that's the really cool and that's one of the big likes about this job i'd say all right sorry that's cool yeah now i feel the exact same on that um i actually did have one more question and now that i'm just like thinking about it so if, if there's someone that was applying for med sales jobs like what is the biggest thing that you think that they can do to actually like connect with the right person to actually get them the job because what i've seen man is when they apply over like indeed or any other kind of sites like nobody ever gets anywhere man because yeah. most of the time at least what I've seen, the job is already filled before they post it, but the company just sort of has to post it contractually. Um, no, I mean, and that's the other thing about this job. It's very hard to get into this industry unless you have a really good sales background or you have some type of medical background that kind of leads you into this job, if that makes sense. Like you had that kind of role, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, for someone kind of applying to get in, and I talk about this a lot with people because I have friends who've been trying to get in for years, just know about the industry in general. It's not going to be easy. It's never going to be easy trying to get a job like fresh. Like if you don't know the person you're applying or the, if you don't know someone uh, within the company you're applying for, you're going to have a really tough time. They're going to, they're going to put you through a really tough interview process. That's how this job works most of the time. I would say for people, I would just, I would say you got to show your, um you bring value you bring some type of sales experience um and then most people that get this job you know they know someone within a company or you know they have these things called med device school now where you're paying 20 to thirty thousand dollars to go learn about the industry the anatomy the biologics and how to sell a little bit get a hands-on training on the med device or the surgical techniques and whatnot um yeah i don't know because my situation was i like i said i knew someone when I uh, went for this job, so that would that helped me a lot. But just I, I I think just like somehow making making you stand out more than the other applicants, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Just show them you're going to bring value. You're going to get up every day, and you, you're the company's not going to regret hiring them just because they they're just bringing so much value to the table. You know, so yeah, man, that's the biggest thing too that I find, especially with applicants that have no experience at all, because uh, you know a lot of them want to break in but you know if i was an employer or something like that i'm like well if i have this guy that has four years or experience or something and you know versus the guy that is going to have to be trained for a while and might not work out you know it makes yeah. more sense a lot of times to hire the guy with the or experience but not to say that it's impossible i mean i see it all the time where people break in without experience but for one of those like senior management or roles and whatnot yeah i've never seen anyone <laughs> get, land one of those with no experience yeah, I mean, and I think I think the other thing is like, um, there. I mean, there's a lot of companies, so I feel like for people and if they hear this, you know, there's there's always going to be an opportunity med device. You just got to find it. Mm -hmm. so. Nah, that's big, man. That's big, and that's a that's a good one to end on right here. So uh, you know, thank you, Duke, for the time. Uh, appreciate it big time. So you know, and then. Uh,